Hello, everyone. Today we'll talk about packaged tasks. Let's use our old example of factorial function, which computes the factorial of an integer n. In the main function, I create a packaged task t with the factorial function. So t is a task being packaged up to a package, and this package can be passed along to different places such as a different function, or a different object, or a different thread. So after this, many things could happen, and at a particular time of point, this task is executed. And it can be executed in a different context, other than the place where it is created. So this is a package task mean. It's a package of tasks that can be transported to different places in the program and being executed over there. A package task is a template class that is parameterized with the function signature of this task. So factorial is a function that takes an integer and return integer. So this is also a function that takes integer and return integer. And when the task is executed, it also needs to take an integer parameter. However, I cannot conveniently get the returned value from t, because t always return void. To get the returned value, I have to do this, integer x equal to t dot get future get. This will give me the returned value from the factorial function. Note that a package task is kind of unusual. When I create a thread, t1 with factorial function, I can pass additional parameter to the constructor of the thread, and this parameter will be treated as the parameter of the factorial function. But I cannot do that for the package task. I cannot pass additional parameter into, this, uh, into the constructor. Instead, I have to use the bind function to bind the factorial function with its parameter and create a function object. And this function object is then passed to the constructor of the package task to create a package task. Note that this new constructed function object cannot take parameter anymore, because the parameter is already bundled with the factorial function. So this template argument also needs to remove the integer parameter. And when the task is executed, it cannot take a parameter. So a package task is created differently from the way a thread is created. Let's remove all these things. Now let's consider this question. Do we really need this package task? It seems we can do all these things by just using the function object. Say I comment out this one and do auto f, or let's just use t, t equal to stand bind factorial 6. So now t is just a function object, and at later point, or even in a different thread or different object, different function, I can invoke t. So it seems like the function object can serve our purpose well. We don't need a package task. The main advantage of a package task is that it can link a callable object to a future. And that is very important in a threading environment. Now, let's say 
we have a task queue, which is a deck of packaged tasks. And in the main function, I don't want to execute the task t in the same function, which is not very helpful. Instead, after creating the task t, I'll push it into the task queue, hoping that somebody will pop off the task and execute it in an appropriate time. And this somebody would be another thread. That's called thread1. And this thread1 will create a packaged task t. And t equal to move task q dot front. And then it called t executes. And in the main function, I'll create the thread1. t1. And later on, before I exit, I'll call t1 join. So now, the main thread will create a task and push it into task queue. And then the thread 1 will pop off the task from the task queue and execute it. Note that the factorial function generates a return value. So when the task is executed, it generates a returned value. How do I get the returned value? Especially if I want to return that value to the main thread. It is actually very easy. I can use the task t to create a future. t dot get future. And later on, when I need the returned value, I can call fu dot get. So this is very convenient. Now, do you see any problem with this code? Think about it. The task queue is shared between thread 1 and the main thread, which means we have a data race condition. So we also need a mutex mu. And before I access the task queue, I need to lock the mutex. And the same thing here. And here, typically, I also need to pop off the task after the task is used. And note the front function and the pop front function needs to be combined with the same locker. Otherwise, the code is not thread safe, as we have discussed in the mutex video. So, how does the code look now? There are still problems. There are one minor problem and one major problem. The minor problem is, since this t is no longer used in the main thread, we can move it to the task queue. And the major problem is, the thread 1 might call the front function before the main thread call the pushback function. And that will become a disaster. So we need to make sure the front function is called after the pushback function. To do that, we need a standard condition variable cond. And before calling the front function, we'll call cond wait locker and a predicate. This predicate verifies that the task queue is not empty. And to use condition variable, we can no longer use lock guard. We have to use unique 
lock. And the same thing here, we need to call count notify one. Now this program is thread safe. So this is how to use a packaged task for threading. I have also given you a review of how to use mutex and condition variables. Lastly, let's have a summary of the different ways of getting a future. There are three ways of getting a future. The promise has a function get future. Package task has a function get future. And the async function returns a future. That's all for today. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and see you next time.